One planet. One place. 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 Welcome to One Planet, One Place Radio Show, the show for the human spirit. Brought to you in conjunction with the Evolutionary Business Council. Now, please welcome your host, author, international speaker, and growth coach, Simon Jordan. Well, today I am joined with a a fellow member of something I uh, became a part of, and if you listen to the uh, Teresa de, de uh, Grobois interview where we talked about the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council, and on there we have lots of members from all over the globe, and the lady who I have got coming up now is a lady called Siobhan Moran, and she, we, we were on a collaboration call, and we were talking, and I, I love what she's doing, and I wanted her to come on the show and to share this stuff with you, so I'll give you a bit of background information so you can think, well, I, I need to carry on listening to the show. Well, Siobhan is an energetic solutions entrepreneur, success, and master energy coach. So that's pretty quite a lot of business card you have, Siobhan, <laughs> with all that on there. <laughs> and she's the founder of the, and the creator of the Energetic Solutions, Inc. She's an entrepreneur, impact, and success in, a system. She is devoted to teaching conscious CEOs, entrepreneurs, and coaches how to partner universal principles with practical step-by-step technology to have both health and wealth to better serve the world. Yeah, totally up for that. Through her Conscious Conversations for CEOs or Energetic Solutions Inc., Business Bootcamp, Private Mentor Coaching Programs, and Prospect, Siobhan leads her clients through transformation to transcend energetic obst- uh, obstacles that hold back the fulfillment of the soul's purpose to build a business from a place serving joy and abundance I totally agree with that you know with with blockages and things like that yeah things aren't happening and so you'll so Siobhan, anyway welcome to the show and we'll go into this a bit, bit, bit more detail but welcome to the show thanks Simon it's it's great to have have you on here now it's you're over in California is that right I am. So it's mm-hmm. very early in the morning now, so I won't speak too uh, too loud. <laughs> but tell me a bit more about uh, this the whole secret energy of miracles and unblocking people. So people probably listening to this thinking, what, what do you mean blockage? Um, well, if, if I were to say, if you're not where you want to be and you're struggling, you're, you're coming across issues all the time, maybe there is kind of a, some kind of a blockage. Something is holding you back. You're not supposed to be doing something, for instance. So tell me, Siobhan, what it is you're doing and how you work with people. One of the things that happens when uh, people are stuck is they go through a similar cycle or routine, and a lot of people work with the mind and the mindset, and that's a really good piece to work with. However, there's an energetic component to the mindset, and it's important to understand that energy is everything, and really remember that energy is everything, and everything that happens in the mind also happens in the energy field. So you walk close to somebody and you kind of feel their energy, and we're just kind of getting um, a language around that. That's my expertise is teaching people how this stuff really applies to them. And so anytime there is a consistent pattern, it becomes like a wall or a hurdle or a block or an obstacle or something that you repeat again and again and again. And when that energy is shifted, changed, resolved, transformed, you know, um, then what happens is there is great forward movement. And then there are different, there are different aspects to each energy, um, textures, sounds, um, uh, viewpoints. And the objective is to get those out of the way, find out what those are, and get those out of the way. Now, a therapist will do that over 10, 20 years. And what we do that is in, you know, like by the first session, we've identified, um, you know, the top seven obstacles. So how do you go about doing that? What I mean, what's the process? I mean, if people, you know, sort of know about therapy and things like that, you sit and you do a lot of talking. Yeah. What's the process you you use then to get this uh, find out what it is that the, what issues there are? 
Yeah, so let's just say somebody wants to have, um, you know, they're working on getting success in their business. You know, they're an entrepreneur, and that's one of my specialties. And uh, they have something that's just like, I don't understand, I've been at the same sales, or I'll, I'll give you a story of a guy yesterday. And um, he came to me and he said, I just feel like I'm just depressed. Now, he wasn't depressed. He was stuck in his old pattern of thinking of how money, um, there wasn't enough, there, um, you know, supporting his family, he didn't have any freedom, he didn't want to go out and call on clients anymore because he wanted his staff to do it, but he had to let go of most of his staff, so he was really stuck in this, in this big place. And so the objective is to use a set of uh, protocol tools that I have. And yes, I do have a few questions, but it's not going to take 10 years. It's going to take like 10 minutes. <laughs> and and to really use those protocols to find out, okay, so where is this, where is the hiccup? Where is the energy stuck in the energy body? And where is it stuck in the mind? And where is it stuck? And here's, the, here's something that's really critical, Simon, is we have these lineage patterns where energy gets stuck. So money is one of those absolute lineage patterns because you can see it. People who are born into wealth seem to accumulate wealth easy. People who are born uh, in different circumstances have to overcome a lot of those patterns, programs, attitudes, beliefs, and energetic imprints in order to make those great big breakthroughs. So it's, I mean, it is all about mindset, isn't it? A lot, but it, but is it? It's I mean, I know it can manifest then into the, the body as well and create illnesses and things like that. It's, I mean, do you deal with that side of it as well? Absolutely, because he, how I started this is when I, I had gotten sick and, and nearly died from uh, my blood being poisoned, and I was in corporate environment. And what I noticed, you know, we'll get into this story in a while, but what I noticed when I started doing this work with others, for others, is everybody came to me with a health issue. And when we solved the issue with the health, money always showed up. Always. So whether it's shoulder pain, there's something going on in the financial world that is tied to the shoulders. Um, a guy the other day, foot pain, and we related to some of the some of the things that were holding him back, and he just told me yesterday he made ten thousand dollars in sales that he's never made. Fantastic! It's, it's amazing. It's just, yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, I, I'm very a, a big believer and also believer in, in, in being guided. Do you think that people? And I've talked about this a lot on on the shows before. Do you think a lot of people they're just not listening? They're not being aware of what's going on. They're not quietening their mind to actually even sense what's happening within their body. Um, they're just everything is rush, rush, rush. They're not appreciating anything. They, they eat the food too quickly. They drink too quickly. They, you know, everything is is on top notch. And the only time they really relax is when they've got a drink in, in their hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that's all a big problem with it, with the, the whole energy and not? I mean, not even walking out in nature, but to appreciate being there. And to be to feel connected, because a lot of people, I meet so many people, I work in the corporate world with my clients as well, so many people aren't connected, and I think that leads to to a whole host of problems. Do, is, is that, do you see the same kind of thing in, in the work you're doing? You know, people are rushed, and energy is, you know, energy can be rushed or it can be slowed down. And we have gotten into a habit over the past 50 years of hurry, 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 quick, 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 faster, faster, faster. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, there has to be another side to the coin because there are always two sides to the coin. There's the fast and then there's the less fast or the slow or there are always two sides to the coin. And if you don't have both, then what you're doing is you're burning out the body and the brain. And if the body and the brain get burned out, then the health gets burned out. And you'll see, you notice, I mean, all over the world, that people are getting sick and dying actually kind of younger, even though a lot of people are dying older. So there are two sides of the coin, but this rush, rush creates all of these situations where we don't 
understand what energy is. We don't understand how to listen to our inner wisdom. We haven't even been taught how to listen to our inner wisdom. We've been taught out of how to listen to our inner wisdom. And that's one of the most dangerous things that we can have because not listening to our wisdom really leads to a lot of self-esteem things and self-doubt mm. and all the things that we kind of get you know, trained out of. From the time we're five, we're pretty well trained out of those things. Because it it's, it's all external, isn't it? We, we look for so many external stimulations, knowledge, um, and, you know, it's, it is all within us. So just before we go down to speak any more about that, tell me about your, so you, you were in the corporate world and you had blood poisoning. How did that happen? Or was that a really bad cup of coffee from the office? <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen then? You know, I loved what I did. You know, here I was in the pharmaceutical industry, interestingly enough, <laughs> a little dichotomy to what I'm doing now. Um, and I loved what I was doing. I mean, I, I was in um, a product that, you know, helped to save people's lives on the emergency room table. And so I loved that piece. And I was a little overly enthusiastic, so I spent way too much time, you know, at work. Now, you know, talk about not paying attention. Um you know, I came up from a very small town where it was, you know, rural and lots of trees and I walked everywhere and then, you know, and then I go and I live in the city and and start traveling on planes and not drinking water and not eating healthy food and trying to keep up with the guys, you know, and out in the party circuit, you know, to get the business done and and at some point in time, my body said, um, you know, we're not going to do that anymore. And then I got misdiagnosed and realized that I had to take my health into my own hands and found a doctor. And I said, you know, I don't actually believe in drugs, even though I'm in this industry. I don't believe in drugs. I don't believe in taking them. So you, if you give me something, I'm not going to take it. So we have to find another solution. So we tried a whole bunch of things, and um, nothing was really working. And, of course, I was still traveling a whole lot, too. And then, um, you know, he said, well, our last resort to really solve this is surgery. And I said, okay, I guess that's what we've got to do. And so I had a, to get, not to get too graphic, but I had a tear in, in I guess you guys would say, in my bum. <laughs> And um, I couldn't go to the bathroom. Wow. So that's, that's very pretty painful. dangerous. Yeah. And um, so we did the surgery, and the surgery was successful, and it was great. I was back on a plane in two days, and, you know, life was great. Well, it turns out that I had gotten um, just a little tiny infection uh, shortly after the surgery. And I walked around with that infection, which is called septic blood, for seven months. And then ended up in the emergency room, and they said, oh, you're going to stay here for a while. And I said, oh, no, <laughs> people die in these places. I I'm not staying. You can give me stuff. I'll take it. You can inject it to me. This time I'll take it. I for sure will take it. But I am not staying. I will go home. So I, I did. I went home, and, you know, they injected with me with some potent things to get rid of the poisoning. But I really kind of had to stay on my sofa for, like, two months. Wow. In order that's... to heal myself. So, so it was a case, question, almost like septicemia. Because yeah. that, that, yeah, that can kill. That is really bad. I, I, I had that years ago. I had a, an infection in my foot, and you see the, you saw the flashes going up, yeah. and that's the poison traveling up your body. And if it gets to your heart, it can kill you. So you were incredibly yeah. lucky. Oh, I know. And they told me, they said, "Lady, you, how long have you had this?" And I said, "Oh, about seven months." Really? You know, people die from this really quickly. You're really lucky. <laughs> so what did you? I mean, because I, I believe for everything that's bad that happens there is a message in there everything's for a reason you know there's only ever perfect moments be it good or bad but everything is, is there for a reason it's to teach you so what what was your big what did you take from that what was your big aha moment i think the biggest thing was we have so much that we don't know about our body and our mind and we have skills and ability to change our entire life if we just learn some of those and that there is an energy, I started thinking about this energy thing then, and there is an energy to everything. And with that, there is a solution. And all I wanted to do was be really healthy and never be sick again. And that's been like, that's been almost 20 years and I haven't been sick since. That's fantastic. Do you think then, because I, I, I believe that's, 
the ego runs everything. It seems to run everything. Um, obviously, not all the time, but where the issues happen is where the ego gets in the way. And I've interviewed a lot of people who've pretty much said the same thing. I've said, you know, what 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 do you think your key to to you being where you are now? And if if a lot of people have come back and said, well, I've just I've stopped getting in my way. I've stopped tripping myself up. And I think that you know, nature flows naturally. Um, it does. You know, plants grow without struggle. They just you know everything flows and i think for life flows but we analyze it we look at it in the wrong way we uh we don't listen as what you know what we talked about and even when we're sick and i know when i was in sick i went into hospital for a big operation and i like you ah i'll be out no you won't you really won't because if you don't heal you'll die mm-hmm. and similar thing with you but that's the ego ah, i can do this yes i'll put my underpants on the outside and I'll have my cape and I'll, <laughs> you know, I can, I can fly kind of Superman. It, it's it's just, it's nonsense. But it's, if you take that out of the equation, I mean, do, do you feel this as well? We, we're ruled so much by the head instead of the heart. And when you actually listen and you, you, you're told what's going on, you're guided, but we just, we're, we're walking around with a bag on our head and we haven't got a clue. Is that what you felt and that you feel with a lot of your clients as well? If you're the work you do with the clients, do you help them to literally take that bag off, get them to listen more, to to show them the way? Yeah, I do. I do give them. I do give them pointers. And for myself, um, I was given even before that. I was given a much, you know, much bigger wake up call. And I would say that that was, you know, the health thing was my second wake up call. So my first wake up call was. Um, when I turned 30, just a, just a short few weeks after that, my husband died suddenly in a motorcycle accident. Oh, wow. And he was, you know, he was a fearless guy. He was just like one of those, uh, what do you call those, you know, um, you know, don't sweat the small stuff, everything is small stuff. Mm, and I wasn't yeah. that at the time, but when he left, I was like, if, there's, if there are a few things that I'm going to take from him being in my life, that's the one. And everything is like, it's not that big of a deal. Well, I got into corporate and, you know, everything is a big deal. And so I had pretty much that attitude, but I was just really, really, really driven. And did I know that my body was having a problem? Sure. Yeah, I absolutely knew. I just didn't know how to solve it. That was the biggest thing. I didn't know how to solve it. And I didn't know where to go. I'd never, I'd never had a massage. I never had acupuncture. I never, you know, I, I'd been told since I was a kid that meditation was probably going to help, but I never really figured out meditation. And so when I met this particular doctor, and he said, "Well, you need to meditate," and I was like, "Huh? Get my head shut up? I don't know." <laughs> and so <laughs> yes, I get that. Um, I, you know, I, I searched for a couple of things, but not real hard. And then the, the, you know, the body getting sick and, and I was sitting in the doctor's office, the woman who misdiagnosed me. And I was thinking, gosh, you know what? This just feels wrong. I don't think she knows what she's doing. It just felt wrong. And I, yeah. you know, I mean, you're kind of at the mercy of a physician and they're supposed to know, you know, and that's one of the biggest things that I talk with my clients about is, you know, you're supposed to know about your finances. You're supposed to know about um, you know, all of these things, but then you turn your power over to somebody else who really is like the authority. And that's one of the most dangerous things you can do. And that's when, you know, that's when you turn your, you know, your, your ego to somebody else, and then you stop listening to yourself. And that's one of the biggest things I work with, with my clients is getting them to turn that their selves, their inner self, their inner wisdom um, their inner energy connection on. And so decisions are easier and, and there aren't so many, you know, inner battles. So going, just going back, and I, t- I totally agree. It's, it's, it is a lot, a lot to do with the ego and just, just listening. Um, but you, so your husband died, is that after you came out of hospital? It was about four years before that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, do you think then? I mean, this is this is a, this is a question, sort of an, an insight. Did you do you think you mourned for him properly? Did, was it a? Uh, I mean, this isn't you sitting on the couch and me being the, the physician. Mm. But I'm wondering if that what you went through was something had happened. You know, your husband had died, uh, a massive change. And I always believe that you know, if there's always good coming out of bad. 
it's a horrible situation like that where someone's died and you take something from it so you can become better in yourself but do you think your illness had anything to do with that I'd say my illness had to do everything with it because I was really hiding so it was, um, it was it was you again instead of listening I suppose the it was it the ego saying hey Siobhan you can do this you're strong you're you know you're the, well, you're the was, Wonder Woman I was strong however um, one of the things that you know if I look back on that time is I really felt like I was kind of walking around in a coma for five years mm. and you know a coma when I when I talk with people about you know that kind of thing your body your mind all of your energy bodies are completely misaligned and completely going in different um, directions with different intentions and you're not grounded into the earth and um, you know do what did I mourn properly mm, you know I don't know how you really do that it, it's funny because he and I talked a lot about the possibility even though we were young I mean that's you know I, we both must have had some sort of intuition um, that it was going to happen or else we wouldn't have spoken about it but um, I really know that without him leaving, that I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Not not the way I've been doing. I've been doing this a mm. while, and it's because of him leaving. It's his gift of leaving and his um, spirit that of uh, positive attitude <clears throat> and, you know, getting out there and doing whatever you want, doing whatever it is that you want, that really, really set me to do all of this. And in the illness, I think was a catalyst for me to discover what I'm gifted at. Well, that's it. it it's but so many people and I think you know it, it's you know it does where it's the spirit world or whatever they keep knocking at the door saying listen this is what you're supposed to be doing but again people just don't listen and they just and something else will happen and a knock at the door will happen again and they don't listen and they just keep on going and they finally it's just you've been doing what you're not supposed to be doing. Every, you, everyone has a path, I believe. I mean, do you, do you believe that? Everyone has a path? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just have to really... I was really fortunate to, to listen to the health thing, and I listened, and I, I just listened really well. And I just listened and followed it. I was like, okay, go here. Okay, keep doing that. Okay, keep doing that. Okay, keep doing that. And I know that I'm not like most people in that. And one of the most interesting things that I see when I work with people or when somebody wants to work with me but they're too scared... Because it's a pretty big leap to work with me because I'm going to look, we're going to clear stuff, and you're going to get there. It always happens. But it's, you know, it's <laughs> kind of looking at the icky stuff. And, um, you know, we all have something we're here to do, and we just have to have the courage to say, it's okay, I can allow myself to go there. Yeah, it is. It is about courage. I, I think there's there's four. I think I've talked about this on the radio show. I believe I believe me person is four things to get it. You know, to to succeeding, faith, belief, guts, and action. And yeah. it is the faith, and it is that belief as well, knowing that you will be okay. I think someone said once, God will never throw at you what you can't deal with. You know, yeah. um, and you know, I believe you know, it's true. You you you, know, you are already the success you've had. You are proving. That you are definitely on the right path. So, just I just want to touch because um, we're going to start to round up pretty soon. But how do you get people to have more energy there? I mean, is that is that physical energy, so they feel you know they can do their nine to five or whatever and come home and still feel actually great. You know, if I, you know I've got more energy. I'm, I'm not going to crack open a tin and and sit on the sofa. I just I feel more vibrant. I feel I feel better. I'm not getting sick. How do you sort of do that? My clients always say to me, you give me, you give me clarity, and I'm going to describe it like this. So we all walk around with a pretty dirty windshield, and that windshield would be our energy field, which in part connects to our brain, in part. And um, the energy field being dirty with worry, fear, anxiety, stress, tension, what the boss said, what you fear isn't going to happen, etc. those are all floating around there and it's really tough to see out a dirty windshield as we all know and if the windshield is clean there is an influx of energy so the cleaner and clearer the windshield the more energy you're able to have 
So people will say to me, how how do you accomplish, you know, all of the things that you do in a day? Because you seem to do a lot more than most. And it's because I clean my windshield every day, sometimes a couple times a day. And as that windshield gets clean, that energy just pours in. So, yes, energy does come through the work that we do. And sometimes it's a hand movement, particular hand movements that we do that clear the windshield. Sometimes, you know, it's through some... Uh, practical things like, um, um, gosh, we have a couple of tiny exercises that are actually geared toward clearing energy. So we use a whole host of tools in order to get that windshield clean and clear. But my thing is, coming from corporate, I'm still a little impatient, and my thing is they have to be fast. Yeah. So, do you, I mean, obviously, you know, this, this is what you teach people to know how to do and through through your coaching and work. But it's um, it's a lot to do with meditation, planning, goal setting, and just just knowing what it is you want, and then looking. I suppose trying to be connected. Yeah, one of the things that's really really cool, Simon, is that you know the goals are 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 important, and meditation is definitely important, but meditation for a long period of time, not pe- people aren't going to do it, so I wrote a book called Learn to Meditate in Two Minutes, so people can do it, and then, um, uh, you know, things like goal setting, well, people set all these huge goals, set one goal, focus on one thing, and most people get so scattered in their focus mm-hmm. that there's no way for all of those things to happen, because you don't have the energy because all of this, just like growing a baby, all of these things require a certain amount of energy in order to um, be fulfilled. And just like a business plan, you, you you want to have the strategy and all these things. But if you don't have the energy in your physical, mental, emotional, and even financial body, then it could take longer or it could not not take at all. So, yeah, you absolutely need goals. But you want to focus on one at a time. Yeah. Yeah, don't get too too, too many because again, you you know, you, I suppose you you go into the ego and think, oh, I'm not going to get done. It doesn't work, and you're trying to overanalyze it rather than just it will come, it will happen. Yeah. But um, I think with a lot of things, people have read the the secret and watched the film or whatever. Yet, and I know people have come up to me and said, well, it doesn't doesn't work, does it? What, what do you mean? Well, because you know, I've been thinking I'd like a Ferrari, and it never turns up. Well, <laughs> what are you actually doing to achieve that? What are you doing to to to, to get there? Oh, well, I'm just wishing it. Well, that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> you know, yeah. it just doesn't happen like you've got to be, when you've got to be connected, you need to be quiet and you need to be walking towards that. You know, the mountain isn't going to come to you. I'm sorry, you're not Mohammed. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you do have to, so is that some of the kind of stuff you've got to share with your clients as well? One of the things that, you know, that the secret does is it, it creates magical thinking. But if you really think about a cell phone, that's magical thinking as well. Um, and a cell phone can connect anywhere in the world. So that's magical thinking, but that's also magical thinking with an action. And, um, you know, you can wish for a Ferrari, and you're right. Like, if you, you do have to put certain steps in play, but you can really have that if you absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have complete divine clarity. And there aren't that, people aren't walking around with that, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt, yeah, yeah, and it's 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 really wanting it as well, and knowing that you've 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 you know you've almost got it, and you can feel it, and you can taste it, and you obviously don't taste a car, can't be weird, but um, I know it is is it's um making sure you really know. I talk a lot about you know what is your why? Do you really? You know, it's what what it, what are you what do you do? What is your why that's bringing you to to that success or whatever it is? So, Siobhan, we're, we're going to start to wrap up, but it's been a, a, just a, a joy and a pleasure to, to hear a little bit about your story. But, Siobhan, it's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Orange County in California. Thanks, Simon. Yes. I so much had fun. I mean, this is this is the best radio show I've done in a long, long while. Thank you for your authenticity. No, my father, well, well, even better than the crazy one you did this morning. <laughs> you said... Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> some some crazy fool. But it it, it's it's been a pleasure. And again, you know, it's um, I, I said at the mention at the beginning of this show, it, it, we we have, um, Siobhan and I are part of this thing called the EBC, which is the Evolutionary Business Council. And if you want to know more about that, it's basically like-minded people from across the globe who are helping each other out. It's not about getting more money and and, and all that kind of stuff. It's helping each other on an ethical basis. If you want to know more about that. 
go to e so it's echo bravo council.com so it's evolutionary business council so ebc uh, council.com go and check it out there and um you never know if you if you um you have to get um checked out to see that you know you are a like minded person and you never know we might get to speak to you on one of the collaboration calls it'd be great to have you on there Okay, so uh, we're going to go over to the backstage pass now. So if you want to sign up and listen to that, and Siobhan's going to be sharing her seven steps to more energy and success, go and do that now on the show. And we'll speak to you soon. So this has been me, Simon Jordan, uh, wishing you guys a great week ahead, whatever you're doing. Um, Thank you so much for dialing in. Uh, Don't forget to share these shows, and I'll speak to you very soon. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to One Planet, One Place Radio Show. To make sure you don't miss a single episode, please subscribe on our website or via iTunes. Simply search for One Planet, One Place. And if you've enjoyed this show, then don't forget to share it and click the like button. Thank you for listening.